Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to another installment of Morrow's uh, web-based workplace safety training series, Access Safety. My name is Todd Culver and I'm the Assistant Director for the Association. This project um, is produced in partnership with uh, the Consultation, Education, and Training Division of MIOSHA. Uh, we receive grant funding from the SET Division, um, for which we are very grateful. And the use to which those funds are put uh, is this web-based safety training series as well as other uh, resources that uh, assist organizations that are serving folks with disabilities to enhance their workplace health and safety culture. Uh, we're very fortunate to have with us this morning uh, one of the Consultation, Education, and Training Division uh, consultants, Kristen Osterkamp, uh, who provides industrial hygiene related services to Oakland, Macomb, and St. Clair counties. Kristen has over 16 years of experience as an industrial hygienist and a safety professional working for MIOSHA SET. Um, welcome, Kristen. Thank you. Uh, our topic this morning is hearing conversation. Uh, we'll talk about uh, different types of noise exposure uh, and discussions of a few examples of noise levels and where, uh, when they reach certain levels, uh, employers are required to take action in the state of Michigan. A little bit about hearing loss and then some specifics about the MIOSHA standard that specifically addresses uh, employer requirements for monitoring and uh, hear, uh, noise levels and providing hearing protection with the objective of preventing hearing loss. We'll talk about a little bit about audiometric testing, which is the measurement of, a, of an individual's ability to hear and conclude um, with some examples of different types of hearing protection. Noise uh, is defined as unwanted, excessive, or dangerous sound. Now, employers in Michigan are responsible for assessing, for determining uh, the noise level in their work environment uh, over the course uh, of a work day that's expressed as an eight-hour time-weighted average. And noise monitoring uh, can be conducted and the results will identify employees who are exposed to noise levels at or above the action level, which is 85 decibels. Sound is measured in a unit called decibels. And that's averaged over a typical workday. Hearing protection is recommended uh, for any noise levels that are above 85 decibels. MIOSHA's uh, eight-hour time-weighted average permissible exposure uh, noise limit is 90 decibels. And hearing protection is uh, not only recommended but required at or above this limit. Hearing loss uh, occurs in the inner ear, and it's what we're trying to prevent uh, by establishing these regulations and uh, creating requirements for employers to protect their employees. Short exposure to excessive noise may cause temporary hearing loss, but if the exposure stops, hearing can return to normal, and this is called bounce back. However, if uh, employees are continually exposed to excessive noise, then parts of the ear can be damaged permanently, resulting in permanent hearing loss. Some of the warning signs for hearing loss include difficulty in hearing consonant sounds, such as F or T uh, in normal conversation. Uh, an individual experiencing uh, hearing loss will have difficulty on occasion separating speech from background noise. They may receive complaints from others that they're talking too loudly. Uh, out of the work environment, having to turn up the volume on the TV or the radio. Uh, difficulty in hearing certain tones like ringing telephones or whistles. Difficulty in hearing soft sounds such as a child's voice or rippling water. Uh, and another uh, sign of uh, the onset of hearing loss, constant ringing in the ears, which is a phenomenon known as tinnitus. In the workplace, there are two types of noise. Continuous, which results from operating very noisy equipment. Examples would be grinders or lathes or other types of power equipment. And there's also impulse noise, which is an instantaneous peak 
Um, and an example of this would be a hammer striking a surface or a gunshot or an explosive going off. Both types of noise um, above certain decibel levels can be harmful, depending on how loud it is and how long um, the employee is exposed. In conjunction with that, there are three factors to keep in mind about noise exposure. First is the sound level, the noise level or the loudness. The next is the duration or the length of exposure. And another factor that should be considered when managing noise exposure is the distance from the source of the noise. When an employee is exposed to high noise levels, serious permanent damage can result. And it's not uncommon for employees to believe perhaps that they're getting used to high noise levels. Uh, but in fact, when this is occurring, um, they may be experiencing hearing loss. One rule of thumb um, without um, sound level measuring equipment is that if the noise level is loud enough uh, that you have to raise your voice to be understood by another person an arm's distance away, um, that's kind of an anecdotal indicator without an actual measurement um, that hearing protection may be required, strongly recommended. Um, again, that's at any point or any sound level above 85 decibels for a time-weighted average over the course of an eight-hour workday. Some examples uh, of noise levels. Um, a whisper uh, is recorded at about 20 decibels. Normal conversation raises that level to 65. And uh, even uh, something that we use in our own home, something like a kitchen blender, can produce noise levels uh, in excess of what would be considered the action level in a working environment at 85 decibels and a lawnmower above the decibel level. Uh, and that's important to note for employers who are operating uh, lawn maintenance crews in the summer months, um, estimated to be about 95 decibels, all the way up to uh, a jet taking off at 145. So that's a little bit of a background on uh, noise exposure, some various noise levels, and the impact that uh, excessive exposure can have on an individual's ability to hear. Now to talk a little bit about uh, the MIOSHA standard and some of the uh, requirements as it relates to employers um, and discussions of hearing protection, I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. Thank you, Todd. Well, yes, on this slide here, we are going to discuss MIOSHA's noise standard, which is Part 380, Occupational Noise Exposure, and this applies to general industry. Basically, in this standard, what's discussed is that initial noise monitoring must be conducted to assess noise exposures, and this is pertaining to employee personal noise exposures. When this noise monitoring is conducted, we are looking to see if their exposures exceed what we call an action level. And this is an eight-hour time-weighted average noise exposure of 85 decibels over an eight-hour workshop. If the employee's exposure does exceed that, the employer needs to implement a hearing conservation program and include those employees in this program. That program would include audiometric testing, which is hearing testing, and that would be every year, so annually. Also, the employer would have to provide personal protective equipment, which would be either earplugs or muffs or both. They have to offer a variety of choices, at least two, to, for the employees to choose from. Additionally, employees must be trained. Employees in a hearing conservation program must be, receive annual training and the standard details what that training would include. Um, record keeping. Records must be maintained, not only the hearing testing records, but also records of the training. And this is important because, um, you know, in case there would be an enforcement visit, we always want to produce documentation showing that we do indeed have an active hearing conservation program. More on audiometric testing. Again, this is hearing testing. And basically, this will test your ability to hear at various loudness levels or decibel levels. And again, this is done annually, and this is only for people who have exposures, or employees, I should say, uh, ex with exposures of 85 decibels or higher over their eight-hour work shift. So initially, an employee will receive a baseline. That is their initial test. And every year thereafter, the, the test for that year is compared to the initial baseline test 
And the purpose of this is to see if, if that employee's hearing is being maintained or if there's some decrease in the employee's ability to hear over the years. Hearing protection. There are two major types of hearing protection devices that an employee can wear to reduce their noise levels to below 85 decibels, ear plugs or ear muffs. As far as ear plugs, they will fit inside of your ear canal. And this, in essence, reduces the amount of noise that actually can reach your inner ear. And this is where the permanent damage would occur. So it's almost like a filter, and it attenuates or reduces the noise that's coming from the outside so that you're not exposed, your inner ear is not exposed to that full um, dose of the noise. So if you get the compressible type or the foam earplugs, there's a certain way that you have to insert those. And of course, there's pros and cons to each kind of hearing protection. The compressible type, if you're going to use those, you have to make sure your hands are clean because you don't want to put oil or grease or dirt onto the plug and then put it in your ear. So first, make sure you have clean hands. You will roll that plug um, down into a very small, it'll basically look like a golf tee. Uh, or a crease-free cylinder. So you're taking your thumb and your forefinger and you're rolling that plug until the center is, is really resembling a golf tee. Now with your other hand, you're going to reach over the top of your head and pull your outer ear kind of out, upward and outward. This is going to open up your ear canal so that when you insert the plug with your fingertip, you're going to hold that plug there for a few seconds and you're going to hear it expand as it makes a good feel with your ear canal. And as it, as it expands, you may hear kind of a little a crackling type noise or something where you can hear it expanding. And then that will form a good feel to block the noise. <clears throat> so things to remember with earplugs. Again, hands should be clean before inserting earplugs. Um, the non-compressible type of earplugs, they do also have some firm ones that are reusable that were shown in a previous slide, and they have little posts sticking out of the back. Um, those are nice for employees that maybe can't clean their hands right away, so they can hold on to that post uh, when they insert it versus the foam type where you really have to have the hands clean. Um, when you are using the foam type, please ensure that they fit tightly in the ear canal so that no noise can kind of go around the plug and reach your inner ear. Again, the reusable, they're non-foam type um, earplugs. Those should still be clean with soap and water because they're reusable, and uh, you don't want to have any excessive uh, earwax uh, building up on the earplug. And a lot of them can come with a storage case, so that makes it convenient when you want to um, open them up and reuse them again. If any of the disposable type plugs are dirty or damaged, they should definitely be disposed of. Another option for hearing protection would be wearing earmuffs. And again, there are pros and cons to each type of hearing protection. Uh, earmuffs are worn over the ear, reducing the amount of noise that will enter the ear canal. <clears throat> now, the good thing with them is that you don't have to insert anything into your ear this way. Okay. As far as how to use earmuffs, you're going to want to inspect the lining, the inner lining, for any kind of cracks or tears or any sign of wear. Then you will center the earmuffs so that there's equal pressure being distributed around your ears for a tight seal. And make sure you push aside any hair or earring because you don't want to break that seal that's protecting you from the exterior noise. Make sure also that any kind of uh, glasses like temple bars or eye protection also is not interfering with the seal. Things to remember with earmuffs is again making sure that that seal is not broken whether it be uh, your glasses that you're wearing or your eye protection or your hair, we don't want to break that seal. And when you're finished with using ear earmuffs, make sure they're maintained in a clean condition. You can use a, white, a wet cloth to just wipe off any kind of uh, dirt or debris or anything around the pads. And if they're worn, you definitely want to uh, replace them. Again, some of the pros with them is you don't have to put something in your ear. The cons, sometimes people find them um, to be a little warm, like if it's a summer, you know, you're working in the summer, they can kind of make your ears feel a bit hot, so that some people prefer the plugs in that instance, but you do have options. Great. So thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in this morning to our overview of um, hearing conservation and the MyOSHA standard. Um, if you have any questions or comments, 
please feel free to raise them. Uh, you can send me a message, or we have a couple of resources if a question or comment or request for technical assistance with a hearing conservation program uh, comes up. My um, telephone number and email appear on the screen now, uh, and we'd be happy to help you with any of your workplace safety needs. And MyOSHA is a great resource uh, with lots of publications and training information. Um, you can visit their website, which is uh, also listed on the screen, um, or contact them in their Lansing office. So thanks again for tuning in this morning to uh, this version of MARO's web-based workplace safety training program, Access Safety. And be careful out there. Thank you.